Hi, welcome to Drill Tip Tuesday. My name is Koosje Koene and I'm here to guide you on your creative journey. I'm on my own journey and I love sharing it with you so we can do it together. So today I would like to go outside, even though it's cold, I just really feel like I need to get outside at the days that there's a little bit of sun out. And why not do it with my sketchbook and enjoy being outside even more. Just soaking in the atmosphere and breathing in the cool air. I am going to prepare my page first. I will do that here at my desk and then I will go outside and find a place where I can draw, probably quickly so I don't get too cold. It's really fun to prepare a page like this because it is a creative act, a creative activity, but you don't need to worry about what it looks like because it's just a background wash. All you need to think about is what color you want, how to mix it, and making sure that you have enough pigment to fill the whole page. Depending on the format and the size of your sketchbook, you might want to mix a little bit more or less. And I am choosing a yellow because I am planning to take my sketchbook outside and there's a lot of beautiful yellow colors right now because of fall. So that might really go well together with the subject that I might find to draw. But preparing a page like this is also really great for drawing things at home because you already have a background wash. Something is already happening. You don't have a very blank page, but you already have something fun going on on the page. So what you could do is just randomly open your sketchbook, fill a spread with a color that you like, let it dry, and then do another one. So as you are filling your sketchbook, you will have a surprise that you made for yourself at some point that you will have to work with that day. Your page is prepared in a certain color. It might give you an idea or it might just really add to the moment or the feeling or whatever you want to capture at that particular page. And if you don't feel like it, just skip it and go back to it later. In the fall and winter in the Netherlands and maybe elsewhere too, you have to find the right moment to go outside to draw. Sometimes it's sunny and then everything has to just wait for you to do a quick drawing outside because it's so good to be outside when there's a little bit of light. Even if it's cold, you can do it quickly. And I filmed this a few weeks ago when there were a little more leaves on the trees still. Look at these colors. And this is the place where I'm landing. This is the park really close by where I live. It's a quiet but lively park. And uh, I love going here for walks, but also to draw. So this is the spot that I picked. I have a comfortable seat there and this will be the view that I will be drawing. Okay, I will use a clip so that the pages won't flutter in the wind. I will start with the tree in the foreground, just because that is like a very dark, big shape that is important in my view. And by drawing that tree, I can actually create sort of a frame for myself that gives me a lot of landmarks to measure against to see what goes in the background and what goes where in the background too. It gives me a lot of landmarks for proportions and the shapes that I see behind the tree. I didn't want to wait for the background to dry by itself, so I used a hairdryer for it. And you can see that actually some of the paint has blown out, which I kind of like. I am adding some leaves. There aren't that many leaves left anymore at this point, but there are still quite some. So I'm not counting leaves or anything. I'm just really trying to capture the idea of some of the leaves that are left. And of course, I keep looking at my subject all the time. I keep working on the foreground and with that I help myself to find my way through this drawing and to create even a better frame in which all the elements in the background will fit. There's a lot of leaves on the ground and I just sort of mark making to indicate those. To me now it makes sense to also draw the tree on the left. And with that, I almost literally have created a frame for the view, for the background in this view. And I'm adding more leaves and I'm already really loving working 
on this background wash because the yellow feels a little bit more chalky to work on the watercolor and the ink also responds a little bit different on it than on the white of the paper and I love the contrast of it and the liveliness that it gives. Okay, there's more trees behind that tree on the left and it's a little bit of a tricky tree with lots of leaves and I'm trying not to draw exactly all the leaves because I can't quite see that well what those leaves look like but they move because of the wind and I'm trying to indicate that and then there's a dark bark of the tree so I'm trying to quickly hatch that and indicate that there's some darkness in that background. I see a patch of grass and I see some people walking there so I try to indicate that and then there's more trees so I'll just draw those barks and see how to indicate that they are in a row and how to indicate the patch of grass and then in the front of it there's some trees as well or bushes. I am trying to give those a little bit of a more confident thicker line to indicate that they are closer to me. Branches in winter can be really tough because there are many and they are connected in a certain way but I'm not going to even bother and try to draw each single branch. It doesn't make sense. So I'm just trying to indicate those darker bigger branches and I sort of skip from the background to the foreground and uh, as soon as I see someone walking up uh, towards me I really want to add that person so that's what I do and I see more bushes over there so the longer I look the more I see and that is so interesting I think that is one of the wonderful things of drawing on location or drawing at all that you are taking the time and you are slowing down and you're looking back and forth from your subject to your page and the more you look the more you start seeing but you still have all the liberty to keep things out if it feels right so this park is in the middle of a few different neighborhoods in Amsterdam so I do want to add the building that I see in the background and then in front of the building there are trees again so I just use kind of curly marky lines to indicate that there is something with leaves and branches going on there's people walking walking their dogs so I do really want to add these small little figures because it brings life even though it's just an indication of a person. It is really important not to skip that because otherwise it would just be a bunch of trees with maybe a building in the background and that's it. But it's more than that. This park is busy with people uh, who live in the neighborhood so it's part of the story. To add a little bit more black and dark I am going to use my Pentel pocket brush pen so that I can work a little bit quicker instead of trying to do everything with hatching and also it gives me a very different uh, type of line so I can fill in the darks but I can also do some different mark making which also adds to the liveliness of this place. I feel like I need to draw more leaves because there are quite some leaves here on the branch in the foreground but I'm not sure if it was the right decision because it feels crowded and everything sort of blends together right now but I am not going to worry about it and I'm just moving on with more mark making uh, creating more leaves and I'll see how it turns out and if I can fix anything or if it even needs to be fixed. So I'm just moving through the drawing, skipping from one place to another, just slowly filling in the things that I see and that I notice that I hadn't even seen before. I didn't notice that there were trees in the background here, for example. To indicate that there are different layers in the background, I'm using hatching lines to darken the background a little bit. And I am making this up as I go. I am not sure what I'm doing. This is just what I feel like is the right thing to do so that I can indicate these are trees and that is the sky and this is a building and it's a little bit further away and that way the things in the foreground 
come forward a little bit more and at least that's what I hope. And now I definitely need to bring in some balance because on the left hand side there's a lot of darks and indications of darker bits. So I pick up my brush pen again and I am just going to boldly fill in that tree with some really black ink. It's a bit scary but something has to be done here and I think this is the right thing to do but hey even if it's not I can't go back can I? I like how the brush strokes indicate the texture of the tree. That's like an extra bonus when you use a brush like that. And now that I have this brush here I can also do a little bit more mark making which brings more texture and playfulness and liveliness. That foreground is really bothering me so I am going to just boldly fill in some of those leaves with a black ink to see if that makes a difference and I think it kind of does. Again it gives this idea of a frame in the foreground that leads the eye into the background and really I am discovering all this as I go. If you don't try you never know. Now that I added these uh, darks, I feel like I need to add a little bit more contrast in the background as well. So I'll just keep on going until I feel like I'm done. Doing some extra hatching as well, which also indicates a different kind of shade. And yes, this feels right. I have timed this and this took me exactly 17 minutes and 30 seconds. Well, that was fun. I am happy that I have a hot tea here now to warm up again. I hope you will go outside too today or at least prepare a page with a favorite color or a color that feels right for today and then do a drawing on top. It's fun, it will give you something extra and you won't have a blank page to fear because there's already color on there and all you need to do is just add some on top. I hope you will do that today and uh, I hope to see you next week with my next Draw Tip Tuesday. If you like these videos, I really try to do these every week and you can support me to do that. You can go to my Patreon page and find out how and that way I can keep on making these videos and making them available for free for everyone here on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because if you do, you won't miss out on my Draw Tip Tuesday videos. I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye.